Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Louisiana Now podcast. I am your host, Todd Rossnagel. It is great to have you along with us. In today's episode, we are going to hear from the Louisiana class of ordinands, those who were recently ordained at annual conference. It was a very unique ordination. Our celebration of ministry service took place Friday, November 13th in Baton Rouge at First United Methodist Church. It was a small crowd, just family and friends due to social distancing. In fact, two elders were not able to be there that night due to COVID exposure. Bishop Cynthia Fierro Harvey is planning on ordaining each of them in due time, so stay tuned for that as we will be sure to cover that. But today, we wanted to hear from each of those who were ordained, who have answered the call, and will be future elders and deacons in the conference. Two topics for each of them, why they're doing this thing called ministry, and how the pandemic might be altering church life. Let's begin with the pandemic, and let's begin with the two elders who were not in attendance for ordination due to those exposures to COVID, Reverend Chris Winterman and Reverend Ren Sewell. Winterman began his call in Panama City, Florida, and started as a youth director, then took a job in Benton, Louisiana. And slowly but surely, he says he kept feeling a call to something larger. He would go on to a Crescio retreat where everything became clear Chris was being called to something much larger. He says he sees the pandemic as shifting how we do church, but more of a sign of discipling. I think Jesus told us when he was talking to Peter that the church of Jesus Christ will continue on no matter what it faces. Uh, the church may look different. Um, as a matter of fact, throughout history, the church has shifted and looked different. But generally, that has only been an opportunity to reach more people in different ways for the gospel. So I think the church, as Jesus said, will continue on and will continue to be triumphant in proclaiming the gospel, the good news of the love and grace of Jesus Christ. For Ren Sewell, his call began in Pineville, Louisiana. He said he felt a call to full-time vocational ministry in a regular Sunday morning in song when he heard God say, I want you to serve as a pastor. He says his response at the time was, no, thank you. Ren said he ran fast and far, but that God has greater endurance. The pandemic has brought a lot of frustrations and exhaustion, but Sewell sees opportunity. You know, trying to, to think of things positively, I think, is going to be very, very important for all of us going forward. And the word that I've really been focusing on in the midst of all the craziness and chaos that's been happening is flexibility. Um, I think flexibility is key right now. And I think that the church is really being forced into be, becoming more flexible but I think that's a good thing. And it's something that I hope will eventually um, lead us as the church to be more faithful and also be more fruitful. Reverend Claire Carter began worshiping at Grace Community United Methodist Church in Shreveport. She began doing so in middle school and before long, she was helping with audiovisual needs at the church and began absorbing, as she said, Wesleyan hymns seven times a week, and it eventually worked on my heart. She was in Atlanta, Georgia at the time when she said she was considering a call to ordination and the words just popped out. And that's how the path began 10 years ago. For Carter, she remembers a time when the pandemic began and the wisdom she learned early on about how the pandemic can kickstart ideas. In our conference, we had several opportunities during phase one of the pandemic for our pastors, our clergy to meet together, uh, both for just spiritual encouragement and connection, and also for advice and sharing wisdom and understanding. And um, I cannot remember which one of these wonderful people said this, but one of our pastors on a, a Zoom call said that, uh, that our pandemic is an accelerator, that it moved us more 
quickly towards trends that were already existing, already surfacing in the church. And so while there are a lot of difficulties we're working through, we're also seeing people who are leaning in and going deeper in their faith, uh, working harder to make people feel welcome and feel part of the body of Christ. And we're recognizing that some people who, who like the habit, like the pattern, uh, are not connecting in that same way. And I think it's important for the church to look at itself with honest eyes. And this has given us an opportunity to honestly ask which ministries do we require? Which ministries uh, give this community hope and purpose? Uh, which traditions are most important to our expression of God's love for us and for others? And so I'm grateful for the opportunity in this pandemic to ask some serious questions about our traditions and our energy and our focus in the mission field. Michelle Harris, for the longest time, thought she would just be a pastor's wife as her husband, Jason, was the first to sense a call to ministry. But eventually, Michelle, too, began to feel a tug toward ministry. She and her husband eventually were on staff at FUMC and Meet, and her journey would begin. Harris says the pandemic has thrown all of us into a new world. She jokingly says she didn't sign up to be a televangelist, but says the church has an opportunity. I believe that we are being faced with having to make some really serious but important decisions about how much our faith means to us and how um, dedicated we are to the work of Jesus Christ and sharing the gospel in the world. I think that for a long time, we have really been struggling as the church to figure out what we need to do to, to engage people and to be more relevant and, and, and to break out of the box, so to speak. And COVID just sort of broke the box, like there is no box. And that's kind of a scary place to be because when you're trying to break out of the box, you're like, you're still kind of falling back on a system that you know works. But I think right now we're in a time and a place where uh, you don't really know what's going to work and what's not going to work. And there's going to be an incredible amount of risk taking and trust and faith involved in, in going forward. And, and there's nothing really sure, you know, about the future, about what the church is going to look like. And we are going to be called as pastors and as lay people, um, as Christians to trust in God and to, to really lead uh, based on his wisdom and his guidance. Josh Elder is currently serving at St. Timothy on the North Shore in Mandeville and says his call is a response to living out how Jesus Christ came and saved a really bad sinner like himself, as he says, but did so so that he can share a message of grace for all. Josh sees the church as being pushed into some areas of uncomfort, but that's a good thing. I think it's going to kind of push us into some areas that we may not have been wanting to move very quickly on. Um, you know, I mean, I think the church as a whole sometimes can be a, a, a larger monstrosity to move. And uh, I think that COVID has shook some of the foundations uh, that may not have been foundations for us. Um, and so with, with COVID, there's a lot of change that has to happen. Um, I think it's pushed us into some virtual ministries that we have not been prepared for or we're not ready to go into, but now we realize look, this is a part of what ministry is going to be going forward. And that's not a bad thing at all. You know, I always think about Acts where the, the first church had this great persecution break out against them after Stephen was martyred. And uh, it, it scattered the people. Um, and that's a terrible thing. You know, the persecution's bad. It's, it's terrible. They had to leave their homes. But it tells us in Acts that everywhere they went, they began to share the gospel. And that's how the gospel spread. And so sometimes these, these bad moments that we see in this life can, can shake us and get us to move out. But God has a, has a blessing in that, in that the message begins to spread in different ways and different avenues. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot to be uh, thankful for, even in the face of, of this tragedy. There was never a specific moment in Amanda Smith Price's life where she says she felt a specific call to ministry, but she most certainly had plenty of backdrops. Her dad, Reverend Wybra Price, currently serves as district superintendent and has been an elder in the Louisiana Conference. 
Amanda affectionately shares how she grew up among our pews and Sunday school classrooms all across the conference. Pastoring during a pandemic is unprecedented, as Amanda says. We have no idea what we are doing, but we are doing it and figuring it out as we go. For Amanda, the answer lies in Matthew's gospel. One of the things that I've been telling my congregation and people that I encounter with is the scripture from Matthew where Jesus go and make disciples. Jesus doesn't say, come here, come here to our space, come here to our building, come here to where we are, how we're dressed, how we live, and be a part of who we are. But Jesus says, go to us. Jesus says, get uncomfortable, get out of your uh, comfort zone, get out of your space, go beyond your walls and reach people where they are. And so I think that this pandemic has given us a really unique opportunity, almost being forced into that go verb to go to people in new ways, in new places uh, during this pandemic time. Leo Gaugan was a student at LSU and joined the Wesley Foundation on campus and then served as a youth director at St. John's United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge. Similar to Michelle Harris, she too has a husband who is a pastor and elder in the Louisiana Conference. And Leah initially thought she too would proceed down the elder track, but it would eventually transition to become a deacon. Leah says the pandemic has opened the eyes of the church. This time of pandemic has certainly opened our eyes to the ways in which maybe ministry could be different or could be changed for the future. I think some of the gifts that this time of pandemic has offered to us is to realize that there are a lot of ways for us to connect with one another and connect with Christ, even if we can't be in the same room together at the same time. I think too, it has opened our eyes to just the ways that uh, we need to reach out to our neighbors to be supporters of one another and especially sharing the love of Christ in the world. Susan Lawrence was also ordained as a deacon, and her background in the medical field gives her a unique perspective on the pandemic and its effect on ministry, specifically how we care for one another. Ministering in a pandemic and then walking through this process in such a unique time uh, has caused us to think outside, I think, of our normal comfort zones and to find ourselves ministering to people in different and unique and maybe even good old-fashioned ways. And so I feel like God has used this to elevate our awareness of how we care for people in a different way, and that's not a bad thing. It's not, uh, I don't think it's outside His great will and wisdom to have us think differently, uh, even in this time, and just as we've had to think so differently about even this process. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more from the ordinance, specifically their answers to the question, why are you doing this thing called ministry? But first, a word from our sponsor, the United Methodist Foundation of Louisiana. The United Methodist Foundation of Louisiana's mission is to be a catalyst to support ministry in the United Methodist Church inside our Louisiana conference. They have long been a supporter of our pastors through the Seminary Scholarship Service Program and are fervent advocates of clergy leadership training. In fact, just recently, five of our younger pastors have been selected to participate in advanced pastoral leadership, where they will study the tasks of leadership and build capacity for strategic and intentional leadership. Congratulations goes out to Reverend Katie Black, Reverend Austin Reinhardt, Rev. Fernie Rivera, Rev. Jessica Lowe, and Rev. Allie Young on being selected for this program. And may God bless them as they begin this five-year journey to develop their capacity for fruitful leadership. Welcome back, everyone. The Ordination Class of 2020, our guest today on the Louisiana Now podcast each of them sharing how they see the pandemic shifting the church in the days ahead. And now more on why they are continuing down this career path of ministry. Each of them could have done something else with their life. In fact, some of them for a time even did so. But the call, the call to serve God and to serve others just kept calling them. For Josh Elder, He honestly says there have been times when he thought to himself, why am I doing this thing called ministry? But for Josh, it all goes back to his call, a very 
clear call from God. You know, I mean, I think there are so many, so many different times that I've wanted to bow out and, uh, and hit the, uh, hit the reset button. And I think all of us kind of have that in the, as, as kind of sheep with the grass is greener on the other side mentality. Um, and I think I would have done that multiple times throughout, throughout the ministry if I did not have the call from God that called me to this purpose and for the reason, whatever his reasons are of wanting me to do this. And so, um, when I get to those places where <laughs> that question comes up, which is why am I doing this? Uh, that really is, is kind of the linchpin for me. And the Lord has been so grace filled to continually speak into that call. So there've been, times where I've thought to myself, you know, maybe I should just move on or anything like that. And the Lord will give me a message at just the right time to encourage me or to tell me, no, you don't get to just go off and whatever you got to do what, I, what I've told you to do. And, um, and knowing also that every time we follow that call from God, it ends up better than we ever expected. Um, it ends up in a way where we see God's plans and purposes looking backwards. Just like Josh, Leah Gaugan admits she too asks herself why she's doing this thing called ministry. It has been a long journey to get to this point. And I've asked myself a lot, why am I doing this thing called ministry? I think at the end of the day, there is a passion uh, for Jesus Christ and for being in community with people that I don't think could be satisfied in any other way. There are things that I've learned as a follower of Christ, ways that I've gotten to be uh, in people's lives because of ministry that I think are so important and profound and impactful. And so for me, ministry is just that living out of your love for Jesus in the world, and I can't imagine doing much else. Susan Lawrence has explored other careers, specifically, as we mentioned earlier in the show, in the medical field. But her call to serve as a deacon was a long journey, a road she describes as one worthy walking down. Ordination was something I wrestled with uh, God about. He called me into the ministry in about 2012, actually probably earlier than that, was calling me to uh, bring my voice uh, at my, my place of leadership higher in the church. And I had long discussions with him about that. When I was discerning this process and determining what I would do for God in the church and how he would have me ordered into the church as a leader, uh, deacon, uh, being ordained as a deacon, as I've, I've worked outside in the world for all of the years of my career, I uh, feel very called to that place. I knew that I did not have to be ordained to continue to work for God in the capacity that I was. However, God had called me to this place, and out of obedience, I'm, I'm walking down that road. Chris Winterman explored other jobs and careers, but nothing, he says, nothing fulfills him quite like being a pastor in the United Methodist Church. I believe that God calls all of us to the, the places to which God calls us. And every vocation can be a calling from God, but I never felt quite settled in any of my other vocations. And when I distinguished the call, when through the help of other people, I, I understood that my call was to ministry. I felt this fulfillment and this peace. And ever since I've started doing it, uh, even on my, quote, worst days at work as a pastor, it's still some of the best days of my life. There's, there's nothing else I could imagine myself doing. Um, I'm honored to be a vessel of God's grace. I'm honored to be a part of people's lives and to walk with them as they walk with me in our walks of discipleship. And it's just the place where I find my deepest part of myself fulfilled because I know I'm doing what God has called me to do and being who God has called me to be. Amanda Smith-Price was a biology major in college and considered many other career paths, but ministry never went away. 
had a biology degree and wanted to be an occupational therapist, but the Holy Spirit has such a unique way of just pulling at your heart um, and pushing you in different directions. And so I choose to be a pastor because I know that people need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and not in just traditional ways that we've been doing um, for the last centuries. Jesus needs to be proclaimed and people need to hear the love of God through relationships and through um, parents on the ball field and through community activities and dance recitals and that Jesus is where we are, not just inside the church. And so I'm very convicted um, to go out and to share the love of Jesus Christ to all of the people that I counter, being my authentic self with my family and all of our craziness um, and loudness, but meeting people where they are and sharing the love of God. For Michelle Harris, the question as to why she wants to do this thing called ministry is pretty simple. She sees the change in her own life, and she wants to be a part of that same transformation with others. Um, I think most of all, I am just so incredibly inspired and motivated um, to be a part of a life change in someone else. So I, my life has completely changed. This is not at all the the road I was traveling and and truly my life was a mess and um, had some really difficult struggles that I've overcome. And and I just have so much compassion um, and and a, a Holy Spirit drive inside of me that knows that there are countless, a countless number of people in the world and all around me who need the love and the hope and the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ in their life, you know, and I truly believe um, in the transformation that is possible um, through the saving work of Christ. And and it gives me just such immense joy um, to work with other people, to, to listen and hear about the journey that they're on, to help them connect with the Holy Spirit and, and to experience the Holy Spirit for themselves, um, to help them discover their true self um, in, in God. And so all of those things, I think, are, is the, the real driving force for me. Um, and then, you know, I, I do love the, the church. You know, the church has Um, a lot of struggles and a lot of parts of us right now that that people are saying are ugly warts and things and yes like that 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 is there Uh, but I believe that the call of the church and what God has dreamt of the church being is such a worthwhile thing to seek after and that it's something that this world so desperately needs and I'm willing to just give my life um, to trying to reach that and, and, and doing whatever I can um, in my part uh, to help the church truly become what, what Christ has asked us to be. For Ren Sewell, the chance to change the world is the reason why he continues to do this thing called ministry. Well, life and ministry has been really challenging lately. Uh, it's been hard in so many ways, um, but... I'm still in this because I think Jesus is awesome. (laughs) I think the gospel is really, really good news. And I want to be a part of changing the world. And I think uh, proclaiming Jesus, um, declaring who he is and demonstrating who he is through actions is, is the best way to do just that. For years, career clarity for Claire Carter was always connected to those who are in need. And eventually, it became impossible to ignore that call to career and that call from God. I just have this passion and connection to be connected to, to be connected to people who are in need, people who are hurting, because that's who the church had been for me. And... The more I looked at the opportunities before me, the more clear it became that I I couldn't look away from people who were hurting, from people who were living in dark places, people who need a word of hope uh, and needed something to change their life. And the further along I moved in my academic career, 
the harder it became to resist that call that I should do anything but devote my life to being a source of good news, uh, a source that would connect people who have and are wanting to give to those who are in need and feeling alone. And I can't shake it. I really can't. Even when you have had uh, a very rough week, when you have been so close to people's tragedies, when you have been stretched beyond what you were capable of, it's still impossible to look away from the need and not say, I know something. I am connected to this eternal source that gives me hope. I'm in this ministry because I can't shake it. God has got me and I'm so thankful for that. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from the ordination class of 2020. We'd also like to remind you that the ordination service was recorded and that the entire service is available on our website, our Facebook page, and on our YouTube page. We'll leave links to the service on our show notes. And by the way, if you feel called to ministry in the United Methodist Church, know that there are many pathways, not just those of elder or deacon. In fact, one of the very first episodes we recorded here on the Louisiana Now podcast was an episode entitled Pathways. It was an interview with Reverend Katie McKay Simpson. She and I explored the paths to ministry, specifically how those paths can be explored here in the Louisiana Conference. We'll leave a link to that episode if you are so inclined to give it a listen. For our producer, Mary Burley, our sponsor, the United Methodist Foundation of Louisiana, I'm your host, Todd Rossnagel. Thanks again for joining us.